Well, glory to God. This is going down. We ain't playing with it. Jump in your scriptures. We going straight to Matthew 6, 33. All right. Now, we're talking about resurrection life and your success. How to combine the resurrection life and power of almighty God that Jesus used to raise Lazarus from the dead. That same power that's available to your life, that's available for us, we're combining that. We're adding that to our desires. We're adding that to our goals. We're adding that to our pursuits. Resurrection life and your success. We dealt with resurrection life. We dealt with resurrection. Resurrection meaning, and I'm going to give you these definitions so we can have a foundation to move forward on, a standing up again. Doesn't matter how many times you've been knocked down in life, no matter how many times you've been disappointed in life, no matter how many times you've faced defeat in life, when you connect to Jesus Christ, first of all, them days going to be over. But no matter what, you rose up, whether you knew it or not, but because of resurrection life, because of the God of heaven looking down on you, looking at your heart, looking at your desires, looking at the goodness that's in your heart and got a mess, got you up out of trial, tribulations, tests, got you standing up again. That's resurrection. That's the power of resurrection. Number two, literally a resurrection from death. Have you ever been in a situation where you felt like you was going to die? You felt like you wanted to die? God says, when you connect to resurrection life, you'll never have those moments ever again. They will come at you with thoughts, but you will absolutely destroy them, dismantle the attack of Satan against your life. Sweet Jesus. Then a moral recovery of spiritual truth. You know, in life, to simplify things in life, it's got to come down to good and evil. Right and wrong. Wicked or good. It makes life simple so that you can identify the works of Satan and the works of, of, of God. The works of the Father, the works of the Holy Spirit, the works of the Lord Jesus manifesting through good, manifesting through uh, uh, righteousness, manifesting through that which is loving and compassionate, but directed by God and from God. You and I, we need to be able to recognize this in every area of our existence. That's morality, morals. That word, a moral recovery of spiritual truth. In the worst circumstances, active faith, your active faith, my active faith, our active faith gives God the power and the ability, the right and the authority to turn anything around. Now, whatever was broke, God can fix the thinking. God can fix the expression. God can fix the speech. He can fix the behavior, but we have to let God do it. He'll give us something called courage. We're going to deal with that. We're talking about success. If it ain't success, I don't want it. If it ain't godly success, I don't want it. Don't need it. Satan, you can come and offer me a billion dollars. I don't want it. I don't need it. I've learned how to be content, how to abound, how to be abased. I've learned how to have much. I've learned how to survive with little. Why? Because my external material wealth and and things does not create my identity, does not boost my esteem. They are just things. That's how your thinking should be with the world's way of doing things. Hey, look like Top Stack, act like Top Stack, think like Top Stack, perform like Top Stack, but don't let stuff be your identity. Who is your identity? Who are you imitating? It should be Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life. When we say no, I don't care what comes against me, I'm going to defeat it. Why? Not me and my own strength, but I run with three that don't play. I run with three that defeats evil. I run with three that's got more smarts than anything the devil could ever think he could do. And anything any of the devil's kids can think he can do. You keep talking, I'm going to slash your tires. So what? I'll buy a new tire. But if I catch you slashing tires, that's going to be a whole different story, whole different conversation. Y'all get it? Get so close to God. That the fear of God will be on everything you own, starting with you. 
when the children of Israel came out of Egyptian bondage, everybody in the land was scared of them. You say, why was they scared of them? They wasn't scared of them individually. They were scared of the God that they had bowed down and served. That's the kind of success you want to have in life. That people look at you and they're not so much afraid of you and what you can do to them, which they should be concerned with. But they're more afraid of what your God will do to them. And the only way they're going to develop that kind of respect for God and you, you got to tell them what God can do. Let me say it again. The only way they're going to develop that kind of respect for God and you, you got to start telling them now what God can do and what God has done. Is this too much truth for y'all? Because I think y'all want success in life. I think y'all tired of wandering to and fro and in circles in life. I'm ready to go forward. I'm ready to move forward. And I'm so ready. Why? Because of resurrection life and success. When we connect resurrection life with our desires and goals in life, Nothing can stop it from happening when you glorify God. That means everything you're doing, you're doing it for the glory of God. And you're looking good while you're doing it. You're efficient. You're manifesting excellence. Demons flee when you speak in the name of Jesus. When you start dropping verses in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Sweet Jesus. Look at this here. Cons moral concerned with the principles of right and wrong behavior and the goodness or badness of human character. Moral, holding or manifesting high principles of proper conduct. That means you're not going to, listen, you may catch us acting crazy, but you ain't going to catch us acting crazy all the time. As a matter of fact, if you keep watching us, our conduct and our behavior and our speech is always in an incline getting better. Somebody say amen. See, that's our choice. That's not going to just happen. Nothing just happens. You didn't put your shoes on just by accident. You didn't wake up and your shoes was on unless you went to bed with them on. You woke up and made a choice to put them on. The shoes you got on, you chose those shoes. But you can develop your relationship with God where you can hear God say, not green today. Put on blue today. You say, are you serious? Yes. Because God could speak to somebody from across the country that landed in Connecticut and walking down the street, Blue Hills Avenue even, and God gave them a dream. Bless the one that you see with them blue suede shoes on. And you walking down, minding your business, getting ready to go to Dunkin' Donuts with them blue suede shoes on, and God, there they are. But you've been praying all night, praying all week, God, I need your help. And then hear that person come. God can work, y'all, but if you don't believe it, you just stop God from working for you like that. Read, God worked like that all through the Gospels. Joseph minding his business, sleeping good. God wakes him up in a dream, says, you, Mary, and Jesus, get out now. Because Herod going to try to kill Jesus. He's trying to stop the plan. He's the tool of Satan. Satan wants to stop redemption. He don't want mankind free. He's trying to kill the manifestation of resurrection life. Get up now and take Jesus and Mary to Egypt. Why Egypt? Because he said to the prophet, my son coming out of Egypt. Got to fulfill the word. You say it again, God's got to fulfill every word they speak. Every word they speak is a promise, and it's backed by resurrection life. You say, well, what were they going to do down in Egypt? Was they going to work? No. Why? Because them wise men came with gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They didn't come with cheap stuff. They came with enough stuff that Jesus, Joseph, and Mary could live under the provision of God for years. And you and I tapped into resurrection life 
are living under the provision, the protection, the healing, the deliverance, the preservation of Almighty God. You got to release your faith in this. You just got to make the decision, okay, God, here goes. I'm trusting you. Satan, get back in Jesus' name. I don't work for you. I don't honor you. I don't live for you anymore. Resurrection life. Ooh, sweet Jesus. Third definition of morals. A person's standards of behavior or belief concerning what is and is not acceptable for them to do. See, see, as we express resurrection life, these three principles are so major and so powerful. It's easy to say, oh, God, I love the part about rising up again. I get knocked down, I rise up. I get hit and win, I rise back up. But then God says, that's not just it. Oh, God, I love the fact that I don't have to fear death anymore, that death can't come in there and defeat me. He can't come in here and take me down. And that's longing for the love. But then when we get to this third definition, okay, Lord, moral character, operating from a standpoint of good, operating and releasing a lifestyle of good. You can't say, well, I don't know about that one. No, you can say, okay, God, I like that one too. I'm working on it. I'm working on raising the standard of my character. All right. Y'all ready? Now, go with me real quick, Matthew 6.33. I'm reading from the King James. There's five things that you have to do, that we have to do, that I have to do, that I have to keep in practice all the time. Number one, seeking first the kingdom of God and their righteousness, Matthew 6, 33. Number two, I have to choose to be strong and courageous you have to choose to be strong and courageous no matter what the attack is, no matter what the circumstance and situation is, no matter what you're dealing with right now. You've got to be strong and courageous like God, like Jesus Christ in the midst of it. Number three. Number three, when we start talking about these five principles that you have to manifest, forgetting those things that are behind and look and move forward. You cannot be focused on past failure, past mistakes. You cannot be focused on past hurts. You can't be focused on past disappointments. you got to start forgetting some things. And what God means by forgetting those things, not forgetting them out of your memory, you'll never be able to do that. Satan's going to keep reminding you of your past and your hurts and your failures and your disappointments, whether you were disappointed or you were the disappointing one. Satan's going to always put that in your mind, but it's what you do with those thoughts, and those thoughts are nothing but attacks. They are Satan's desire to keep you looking back instead of moving forward with the intensity and the very fluidity and the accelerating power of God. Okay? So forgetting those things that are behind and look and move forward. Number four, you got to make up in your mind. I got to make up in my mind. Old things are passed away. I got to embrace and prepare for the new. Oh, sweet Jesus. Don't waste any energy on doubt and fear and worry and anxiety. Stop breathing into the bag and start quoting some scriptures. Hallelujah. All right, I'm going to leave that alone. And the last thing that you and I, we have to get our mind focused on, and that is that we can do it. Whatever it is in front of us as a goal, whatever it is in front of us as a task, we can do it because we can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthens us. All right. The, the scriptural reference for that one, that's point number five is Philippians 4, 11 through 13. Point number four is 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Old things are passed away. Prepare and expect the new. And then the third one, forgetting those things that are behind. Philippians again, 3. 13 through 14. So now let's dig in. Let me see if we can get through all of this today. It would be great. Okay. So now, first of all, when we start talking about, you know what I mean, seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, we, we know God is real. We know God is moving. So every morning you got to wake up and say, you know what, God, listen, I'm going to seek you more today. And if seeking God more today 
is reading the Bible for you. If seeking God more today is giving God praise for you. If seeking God more is you saying to God, God, I love you and I thank you. I'm awoke now. I have a resurrection connection. I have your life. I have your success. Your promise of success. If, I mean, if you just start doing that, if you start increasing that, you, you know what I mean? You read a verse, you might read a chapter. That's seeking God. You might call one of your family members and say, hey, look, I'm thinking about you. Just, I just want you to know I'm praying for you. Don't get upset if they say, well, do you even know how to pray? I know enough. I may not know all of the rules of prayer, but I know that I should pray in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a work in progress. We are all works in progress, okay? So number two, now watch this here. This one is powerful because, you know what I mean, as we, as we seek first the kingdom of God, God is going to provide motivation and inspiration for us. And all the prayers you start getting answered, if that ain't enough motivation and inspiration, keep on. God going to answer a prayer that's going to motivate the ooh out of you. Okay, he's going to inspire you because at the end of the day, you just want to know that what you're doing for God is real, that what you've heard about God is real. God will prove that to you. Number two, go with me to Joshua chapter one. Joshua chapter one, we're going to start at verses five through nine. And the second, the second mental, emotional experiences with God that you have to allow God to cultivate and develop in you that you have to learn is how to be strong and courageous in Jesus' name. How to be strong and courageous in the name of the Father God. How to be strong and courageous with the help and the power of the Holy Spirit. Joshua 1, 5 through 9. Listen, listen, listen. This is powerful. Oh, this is God talking to you. This is God speaking to you right now. There shall, listen, listen, I, you know what? I'm telling you right now, I might not be able to contain all of this. You know why? Because I believe all of this and it's all working. Let me read it first, see if y'all can agree with it. There shall not be any man able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Hold on. In order for this to make sense to you, in order for this, when I first read it, in order for this to make sense to me, to where I could embrace it, I had to first go and read what God did with Moses. So I had to go to Exodus, and I had to look at Moses' experience with God. And when I got to that bondage part, I was like... God, you, what you said to Joshua, you, 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 you saying to me? And God said, that's exactly what I'm saying. So let me just say this here to you guys. This is exactly what God is saying to you. God says a part of resurrection life and your success, I will be with you like I was with Moses. You don't like Moses? You can say, well, God, will you be with me like he was with David when he was whooping up on everything? God says, sure, pick one. I got plenty that'll fit your personality and fit your desire for success. You don't like David? How about Elijah? Dude, call down fire, man. Pick one. You want to be like Paul? Man, the Paul cast out demons, but listen. You want to be like Peter? You want to develop your relationship to where your shadow will make people better because of the power of God, the power of resurrection life flowing out of your life? Sure, that ain't happening now. Well, do you even know it's available? Do you even believe it's available? Are you willing to do what those guys did to get that kind of relationship with God? It is available. But God says you can choose to lose. Or you can choose to win. Just get in. Get into that resurrection. But that's pretty good. Huh? All right. All right. Okay. I think corny, but it makes sense to me. Look at this here. Verse 6, be strong. Hold on. This is a command from God. Why? Because God says, if I command you to be strong, it's because I've provided the strength for you to be strong with. Be strong and of good courage, 
For unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give to them. Now, you got to understand something, that what God has promised your, listen, I don't know how many of your kinfolk been praying for you. Your grand-granddaddy, your grand-grandmama, your auntie Festus, your cousin It. I don't know. But somebody's praying for you, and it doesn't matter what humans in your family genealogical line has prayed for you. I'm going to tell you somebody that's praying for you right now, never stop praying for you. His name is Jesus Christ. Seated at the right hand of God, ever living to intercede and pray your success become a reality. And that's some good stuff right there. If that don't create a fearless in you, a fearlessness in you, if that don't create a faith in you, a confidence in you, well, you wait before this sermon is over. Resurrection life going to explode in you, in your expression. Yeah. All kind of stuff is being fired at us, but it's time for us to start firing back. Time for us to start rebuking. Time for us to start resisting in Jesus' name. Look at this here. Be strong and of good courage, for unto this people thou shalt divide and inheritance the land which I swear unto thee to give to thy fathers that give to them. Promises have been made by God to your ancestors that God, if he can get us in line, will do in our lives today. What's that song say? Somebody prayed for me, had me on their mind. I know the rest of the words, I'm going to stop right there. Y'all know that song? That's the one. This word courage is the, the Hebrew word omats. I'm going to give them to you real quick. To be strong. So now this is a choice. When you connect to resurrection power, resurrection life, back to John, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Though he is dead, talking about Lazarus, yet shall he live. Any answer to that other than I believe, Jesus is going to come and try to convince you why to believe. Sweet Jesus. Number one, courage, to be strong. Number two, the word courage means to be alert, be strong and of good courage. In other words, Jesus is saying, be alert, be brave, be bold, be solid in the midst of anything that you're facing. Never give in, never cower, never bow, never come out of your identity through resurrection life. Sweet Jesus. Because all it is is an attack. I don't care what it is or who Satan is using, it's an attack. It could be somebody at your job. It could be somebody that's jealous of you. It could be somebody down the street. Walk in that resurrection life. Walk in resurrection success. Good God Almighty. To be solid. Look at this here. Number six, this word courage means to be determined. Mm. You know when you're around a person that's determined. The problem is, what are they determined to do? Are they determined to glorify God? Or are they determined to glorify Satan? Everybody's got determination working. It's just where we're releasing it. Look at this here, it gets better. Number seven, to strengthen oneself. God says, I am with you. I have released resurrection life in you, resurrection power in you, so that you, when you come to me, can strengthen yourself in any activity. Sweet Jesus. Ooh. Are y'all getting this? Does this kind of sometimes seem too good to be true? Because I'm going to tell you right now, when I start, first started reading the Bible, I was like, oh, heck to the no. No, God, this is too good to be true. No, 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 no. Th these people was crazy. And then I started looking around today, and it's just a different flavor of crazy. I'm talking about 2023. It's just, a, it's still the same crazy devil, but he just got it expressing in a different outfit crazy. A different fit. I see how many times you change your clothes in a day, you still you. And anybody that's smart, Chase, I don't know that's you, Chase. What's wrong with you? You be Johnny. <laughs> I don't care how you, you can be here. This way, this way, upside down. You can come balls. That's you, Johnny. I know you. 
And you got to know your enemies. You got to know how Satan works so you can shut them down. Mike, that's you. You come with it straight. That's you. I know you. And you got to know Jesus and you got to know Satan so that you can say, no, nah, that's evil. No, nah, that's wicked. No, nah, that's not Jesus-like. No, you acting like Satan right now. I'm going to act like you can't see. How many fingers I got up? Zara, how many? All right. How many? It's not 10 fingers. Y'all need to get your vision right. Guys, this is your time to shine for the glory of God. And nothing Satan has in his arsenal can stop you when you know who you are your position in life, and most important, how to rebuke and resist Satan. That's a game changer. How many of y'all have been taught lessons on how to rebuke Satan and been given the Greek and the Hebrew, how Jesus did it? I've been told to rebuke him, and nobody sat me down and said, this is how it's done. This is what it looks like. Now, when you read through your Bible and you see Jesus rebuking Satan, Jesus rebuking the Pharisees, the scribes, and the Sadducees, Jesus says, I've authorized you to do that to every enemy that attacks you. Y'all gonna make me work today. I see it. I got something for you. Watch this here. Number eight, to confirm oneself. We're talking about courage, but we're talking about courage God's way. I mean, you know, when God spoke to Joshua, he didn't need a fifth of vodka. He didn't need liquid courage. He didn't need a blunt. He didn't need earth-filled courage. He didn't need a cheering squad. This conversation was uno e uno, or mano e mano. This was a conversation between Joshua and God. And you and your success connected to resurrection life, you're going to have to have some conversations between you and God. That means when you pray, I don't need a prayer partner. Got one, sits on the throne. When you worship, I don't need music to worship. I know how to worship. I create my own music. No disrespect to the praise and worship staff. You sweet Jesus. You got to be resurrected, independent in your relationship with God. People can go crazy all around you. You'll be the one standing. Don't make me take you back to Daniel and Nebuchadnezzar. The edict went forth. Everybody got to bow down and worship Ebuchadnezzar's statue soon as y'all hear the music play. As soon as the music played, everybody bowed, <laughs> according to the record, except who? I will treat somebody to a coffee if you can, if you can name all four. Daniel. Who else? Who are the other three? All right, too late. Y'all, this deal's off the table now. Shadrach. Meshach and a bad Negro, and a bad Negro. <laughs> they didn't bow, and neither will you. Because the truth that you're hearing about God, when you and God start having one-on-one conversation, you're not bowing to Satan no more. When you and Jesus start having one-on-one conversation, you will stop bowing down to Satan. Y'all know that was good. That was really good. That was Holy Ghost good. All right. We're going to see it. Verse 7. Only, oh, wait a minute. Hold on. I said confirm oneself. If you don't build yourself up, stop looking for folks to build you up. Because nine times out of ten, they will tear you down. For some of the craziest reasons. You might be shining too much. They want to remind you when you was dusty and dirty and dark. You might be shining too much. 
because you're in the closet praying more than you've ever been, and they've been timing you. You might be shining too much because every time calamity comes and tries to steal, kill, and destroy you, you keep coming back speaking the truth of God in Jesus' name. And they're looking at you like you're a hypocrite now. Who cares what they think? You better confirm yourself in Jesus Christ. You better start saying, I am a child of God. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can figure this thing out. This thing will not defeat me. It looks dead, but resurrection life is about to hit it. Hallelujah, man. If you can't praise before you see the change, you need to start praising before you see the change. That's what more than conquerors do. More than conquerors praise and prepare, stay determined, stay confirming their position in God before the physical change takes place. Why do they do that? Because all while they're in the process, they're getting better. And their getting better is not to impress nobody. Their getting better is not for nobody on this planet. First, their getting better is for the glory of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, whoever gets blessed after that, hallelujah. Stop living your life to try to please people. Live your life to please God and people will be pleased that have truth in their loins. People that are good will celebrate you because God celebrates them. People that are Christian that won't celebrate your good, it's only because they don't spend enough time in God. They haven't changed to that level yet. Don't beat them up. Don't dog them out. If they stay connected, they'll grow. You know what they used to say about people. You, oh, you know, you're a slow grower. You're a late bloomer. I don't want to be like that spiritually. I don't want to be a quick bloomer and stay bloomer. If you're a quick bloomer and a stay bloomer, you will be a boomer. I'm going to leave that one. I'm going to stop on that one. Verse 7 again. Look at it. No, excuse me, excuse me. We still got to deal with this courage thing, right? Number nine, after you confirm yourself, you got to persist and be persistent in confirming yourself and confirming that you are determined and confirming that you are solid and confirming that you are bold, brave, and alert that you have been made strong by Almighty God. Your strength is by the power and the resurrection power of Almighty God. That's why you should not be fearless, I mean fearful, to anything in the life. You should be fearless in every area of life. All you need to know is how to do it. You just need to know how to do it right. And then allow the resurrection life of God to cause you to excel above everything that's not operating in resurrection life. Y'all know what that means, right? The bull about to charge. Bull about to take off. Did y'all get that? All right. So if they can teach you how to do it, God will show you how to do it better because you're connected to resurrection life. God will show you how to do the shortcuts that don't lower the quality, but makes you more efficient. Ooh, sweet Jesus. To persist in. And then this is the last definition of strong and courage. To be courageous. To prove superior to. To prove superior to what? To prove superior to anything Satan uses and sends at you to attack your success in life. You know, people that are defeated, not all cases, but most choose to be defeated. You say, that's cold, Reverend. No, it's true. How can you say such a thing? Because if you don't choose to do what it takes to be successful, then you choose by not choosing success and the things to do to be successful, you choose defeat by default. And people need to know that. And they need to know how Satan has tricked them and deceived them and bamboozled them and clouded their judgment so that they're not alert to how to do the things and get the power to be successful. Come on, somebody say amen. You know I'm telling the truth. Holy Ghost speaking right now. So you are going to, with your courage, 
with this courage, you're going to change the way you do things. I have to change the way I do things. I, I make changes all the time, but for the better. You say, what happens when you make changes for the worse? I repent and change for the better. Well, what if you keep making changes for the worse every day? And every day, every day, every day, I repent and I change for the better. What's the matter with you? Did you hear me the first time? Did you hear God say, this is what keeps you in the game? So what you got a dent on the front part of your car, a dent on the back side of the car, a dent on the nose of the car, a dent in the back. Heck, you got a dent on your steering wheel. How the heck did that happen? Well, you're going to drive with dents, but finish the race. I will run on y'all. I will take off and run around this church. Don't play with me. Are you ready to move on? Look at this here. Verse 8. Let me verse 7. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee and turn not from it from the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. That thou mayest who? Prosper wherever you go. You prospering anywhere you go is the calling card, the business card of God in the earth, your life. You open your mouth, God's business card is speaking. You do something noteworthy, God's business card is speaking. You do something goofy, God's business card is still speaking, but God be like, well, uh, they adopted. <laughs> I'm just saying. You know we all adopted into the family of God, right? Got to get to Galatians for that one. We all adopted in. You know. All right. Y'all with me? I don't even meet me at the church. Dr. Bill. What? I'm just joking. Every now and then we can have some fun. Amen. Look at this here. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. This is the word. You got to have that word. You got to have the, the truth of God as your foundation. And then he says, listen, if you turn not from it to the right or to the left, you will make your way prosperous wherever you go. Why? Resurrection power. Why? Resurrection strength. Why? Resurrection life. Put truth in your situation and God will fulfill that truth and God will set you free. Put truth in your situation and Satan will not be able to overcome and stop the truth. Now you're learning how to rebuke. You're learning how to talk like Jesus. You're learning how to resist like Jesus. Now start learning and preparing how to expect what Jesus promised in Jesus name. All right. Well, glory to God. My time is all gone. It's been a pleasure to bring this part two of a resurrection life in your success. We're going to go ahead and finish next week, Lord willing. And it's going to be even, it's going to have some juice on it next week. I can't wait to get there. I'm Apostle Edward B. Haynes, Resurrection Life Christian Center Church International here in Hartford, Connecticut. Hey, listen, be kind. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Be kind. Tell a friend. Send it to your family. Send it to your enemies. Just tell them, say, hey, check this out. Hey, until the next time we get together, may God bless you and keep you. Shalom.